there, Toy here. It's a brand new year. And yes, I'm a little late, but hey, you guys know me. Um, the fact that it's January and I'm recording is a triumph. Um, so this is where I would do my normal monthly wrap up, but this is um, kind of a year in wrap up, which will include my monthly wrap up with it. Um, I took a break from reading in the month of December where I usually like read a lot. I still did read, but I just restricted it to my two um, IWSD book club reads just because I wanted to focus on family time and stuff like that around the holidays. So I am going to be doing a, a complete review of my Goodreads challenge. Um, for any of you who are on Goodreads know they pretty much do it for you. And I'm just gonna share the website like I normally would to do that wrap up and then I'll record my review video. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, let's see here. Let me get my website up. Here we are and we are ready to get into my 2021 year in books. Um, I achieved my challenge. So it says that I read 7,000 pages, um, which I don't know, that seems kind of small for me. Uh, I feel like I've normally read more than that, but hey, I have to go back and look at other challenges to know for sure. Um, but I did read 55 books. Now, remember when I do my challenge, it's not all based on novel length books, it's just titles. So I read 55 titles. Some of those were really short, and some of them were, you know, average, some of them were long, but that's what I set out to accomplish and I did it. Uh, let's look through it. So it says the shortest book that I read was nine pages and it was a short story. And the longest book I read was 488 pages. This was actually a graphic novel. And again, that's a little odd for me. I feel like normally my longest book is like just a regular novel, but this time it was a graphic novel. So there you go. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. So my average book length was 142 pages. I read a lot of short stuff this year. Um, and I just felt like it was a kind of year for that to, 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 you know, read shorter pieces to get more in. Um, I feel like that might change a little bit in 2022. So let's keep going. My most popular book was Pumpkinhead. And the least popular was Fast and Furious Fiction. And the only reason that's the least popular is because this is good reads. You know, this is like a national international app that everybody uses and this book is by an indie author and she's really popular in her genre but you know when you compare her to rainbow rowell you know it's a really good book so don't let the fact that not a lot of people have shelved it um you know fool you into thinking that it's not worth checking out so my average rating was 4.3 i feel like i'm generous with my ratings i i am critical but I try not to be overly critical. When I read, I read for pleasure. I feel like a lot of people read for the purposes of criticism. Like they just wanna like tear down writers. Um, for people who are writers reading other people's work, I feel like if you're being overly critical, is it because you feel insecure in your own writing or are you just that critical? I don't know, everybody's different. So if I give something a good review, it's because I enjoyed it. If I don't give something a good review, it's because I didn't enjoy it. I try not to be nitpicky. And so I think this is pretty fair, a 4.3. Yeah, that, that seems average for me. Um, my highest rated book was um, Cast the Dark. And what's so great about this is that um, this book isn't even out yet. Um, this author has a huge following. We thought his series was over. He's bringing it back this spring. And I'm hoping that I'll get to be part of like a, I don't know, a blog tour or something if he does it. But I was just honored to be able to uh, read an arc of it. So we'll see what happens. Um, it says my first review of the year was Temple of Ghosts. And it gives you a little snippet of the review. And I actually will share this with you. Um, I like this series. And so this one, it says, I enjoyed this series from the start, but this is clearly my favorite so far. In this installment, Kate and Jackson are a solid team, even if they don't have the greatest confidence in themselves and it fuels the story. Plus, they get to travel to Egypt and explore a pantheon of gods not usually heard of in the Western culture. Um, the introduction of likable and even downright lovable side characters made this story feel like home. And of course, you know, there's more to the review there, 
but yeah, I would say in the whole series uh, that is the Ghost Rider series, this one is still my favorite, but they they just they're just good, you know. So yeah, anyway, let's keep going. So here's everything that I read. Um, I um, read a lot more nonfiction than I normally would, but I'm going to be starting a new challenge that's going to help me stick with reading that nonfiction stuff. But um, so as you can see, Temple of Ghosts, um, well, this is nonfiction, it's a writing book, this was a cookbook, this I believe I actually did this one as an audiobook because I thought at the beginning of the year that I was going to do an audiobook challenge and by book two, the audiobook challenge just kind of fell through, but I'm hoping to um, kind of revive that. I don't know if I'll do the challenge, but definitely try to read some more audiobooks. So here's just another, you know, some quick glimpses of the things that I read. As you can see, a lot of graphic novels, a lot of fiction. Um, challenged myself to read outside of my genres. Um, this is a memoir, and um, you know, um, this this was probably one of my least favorite reads of the year, which was very disappointing because I really loved um, Life of Pi by Jan Matrell. This book, I just Ooh, that's where that whole 4.3 came from, because even though I tend to be generous with my reviews, I just, that book, ugh. anyway, I'm going to keep going. Um, so here's other things that I read, um, sprinkling in some more nonfiction, um, lots of, like I said, graphic novels, short fiction, um, women's fiction, again, me challenging myself to read outside of my normal genres, um, more nonfiction, writing and promoting, um, some anthologies. One thing that I did in 2021 that I, that I don't normally do consistently was read um, series. <laughs> like I will read a book in a series and then maybe a year later read the next. No, I read lots of series. I read books in the Ghost Rider series. I read books in the True Color series. I read, so I, I read a lot of books that were in a series and I was very proud of myself for that, that I'm actually getting through series. I'm hoping to continue that trend in 2022. Um, more graphic novels. Um, this one was a like um, murder crime mystery. Um, again, me challenging myself. I like mysteries, but for some reason I don't read more of them, but here you go. Um, some paranormal, of course, that's, that's not unusual for me. Um, more stuff by J.H. Moncrief. I really love her work. I think I'm actually going to do a month of Moncrief in the year 2022, just because I have several books of hers that have kind of like slipped through the cracks for me. Like, how did I miss those books? And so I'm going to maybe use a month to maybe get caught up on some of her stuff. Um, some anthologies, some more short fiction. And uh, here again, me reading books in a series. What? Yes, I'm an, I'm an adult now. <laughs> Um, and finishing out the year on some paranormal young adult um, reads, I have been threatening to do a spoiler review for Tristan Strong Keeps Punching, and I think I'm going to include that with my reviews for December since there's only two books, so we'll see how that goes. That's coming up next, and it says that my last review of the year is Shattered, which that's actually not true. The last book I reviewed was Being Human, so I don't know. Maybe this was established before that was posted I don't know but um it was a four-star review shattered um young adult contemporary um with a little bit of a mystery involved there so that is what I read in 2021 I had set the goal to read 50 books and I ended up reading 55 so for the year of 2022 I've set my challenge to read um 60 books I believe let's scroll back up to the top let's see here we are 2022, my goal is to read 60 books and I've read one book so far. So, <laughs> well, that means I've completed a book. Obviously I started the book in January, I mean, in December, and finished it in January, but I think I'm off to a good start. So let's go ahead and close this out, get things back to where they were. So that was my year of reading in 2021. There was a lot going on in 2021. I think everybody can relate. Um, highs and lows, ups and downs. Um, I'm hoping to just build on those positive things in 2022. Continue trying to um, find time to, to write since writing is so much a part of me. 
Um, really hoping to amplify things with my Patreon community and do some more video stuff. I think video is, uh, is, is where I'm feeling comfortable right now. So that is what I did in 2021. Um, please let me know how your challenges with if you did any challenges and um, stick around. I'll be doing my review video soon. Until next time.